because you were able to achieve higher details. If you increase it, it will reduce your results. So increasing it will enhance your results, but it will also reduce them. This is very important and is also something that is repeated in all. Regarding partial volume, I was just talking a little while ago, and I said that if I have two objects, this one and that one, for example, both together, and I am now, taking a small slice thickness. Let's assume this is the region I have, and it contains two objects like this. If I take a slice here, and then take a slice here, this is the slice thickness, and this is the slice thickness, for example, one millimeter, and this is one millimeter. So you will see this object in this slice, and you will see this object in this slice. I said, no, I want a larger slice from here to here. In this case, what will happen? In this case, what will happen to those two objects? They will be grouped together, and in this situation, you cannot detail them separately. This is called partial volume. The partial volume occurs because you have two objects present. It gives a signal when I receive the signal in one pixel size. And therefore, I reviewed the signal coming from this position, so I do not have information. Therefore, I don't have information about it. I consider the two as if they are one object for me. So there was a merge. I experienced an overlap where I considered the two objects as if they were one object. This is called the partial volume effect. And it occurs in all imaging modalities. The machine itself has a problem with partial volume, meaning that if I have one object next to another, both are close to each other and both give a signal, these two signals are received in the same pixel. Consequently, the pixel cannot distinguish whether the signal is coming from this object or the one next to it, so it sees them both as one thing. It averages these two signals and tells you this is the signal. When you look at the image, for example, you might see the liver appearing a certain way, and there might be a part that looks like a focal lesion or something like a point, maybe with a gray or shadow or hypo. This part makes you question what it is based on what you see. So you reduce it and check to ensure that this part is visible to you. But where is it visible? It's in one slice and not repeated in several slices. So you say, well, this is partial volume. Therefore, this is the meaning of the term partial volume. Now, when you have an organ and you divide it into two small slices, to cover the whole organ, you need many slices. If you increase the slice size, what will happen to the scan time? Your scan time will increase. We should note that reducing the slice thickness will increase the resolution, but it will also increase the scan time. However, it will eliminate the partial volume effect. So if you want to eliminate the partial volume effect, just reduce the slice thickness, but this will come at the expense of scan time because your scan time will increase and your resolution will improve. So keep in mind that if you reduce the slice thickness, the resolution will increase. The scan time will increase, but keep in mind that when you increase the resolution, the image can become noisy because you will need to know that your signal has decreased. So let's connect this. When the resolution decreases, my signal decreases, and consequently, my scan time increases. All of this is related to slice thickness. What is the advantage of reducing slice thickness? I will achieve higher resolution and overcome the partial volume effect. It is preferable to do this in cases like the petrosal, cases like the pituitary gland, cases like the wrist joint, and cases like the ankle. Situations that require higher resolution will necessitate reducing slice thickness. I take my slices, here is a slice, here is the origin. I take a slice, um, day, and I take another slice. In fact, this slice has a profile, which means it has a specific shape. You don't just apply the RF pulse at this point. Rather, you take a window or a range from the slice. 
the point of interest becomes your reference. So there is a shape to your slice profile that looks like this curve. If you have these slices close to each other, meaning you have taken a slice here and a slice next to it, and you are taking these slices sequentially, one after another, then you take a slice here and a slice next to it. There is an overlap in this area, which is called crosstalk. This part has been affected by the first slice. And when you come to the second slice, this part that has been affected becomes very weak. Why? Because this part has been influenced by the first slice. So when you apply your RF pulse to the second slice, you will find that this part is already weak for you. It means that it didn't refer back again. All of this is affected by the first slice. And consequently, this part gives you a signal that is very weak compared to the rest of the signal. And this always happens when, let's see, a set of slices is taken and there is a part here that has a dark signal. Why is that? It is a result of the superimposition that occurred, which is called crosstalk artifacts. This happened because your slices overlapped and therefore you took different angles of the lumbar spine. So there is a part of this slice that you went back to. But at that time, it had been excited in the XY plane, making it unprepared to receive your new RF pulse. Therefore, at this time, it will give you a weak signal or dark signal. This always happens, folks, due to the way it is structured. In addition, these crosstalk artifacts are a common occurrence in imaging, and understanding them is crucial for accurate diagnosis, which is a phenomenon that it can also occur uh, between the normal slices as well. Like the regular slice of the brain, that's why they changed the method of taking slices. Instead of taking the next slice immediately, they start by taking one slice and then skip a slice, then take another slice and skip one again. He takes the next slice and leaves the one after it, so he first takes the zero slice and then goes back to take the blue or the upper blue slice. This is called interleaved or interleaving. Some people find it difficult and refer to it as interleaved or interleaving. It means he takes his own approach in scanning, taking one slice and leaving the next, taking one slice and leaving the next. This is done to overcome the crosstalk artifacts that may uh, occur. This will improve your performance, meaning it will make your results better. So the more you work, the better it gets like this image and this image and this image. Here, you are taking the slices one after another without any space between them. There is no space between them. That's why you are taking, for example, a four millimeter slice. You need to leave a gap between each slice. What does this gap help you with? It helps you eliminate what happened. So you eliminate what is trapped in the image. You feel that the image you are seeing is clearer. So when you increase the gap, it improves the image quality that is present. And also when you increase the gap, you can cover a larger area in less time. Because when you reduce the gap, you create overlapping between the slices, which requires more slices and thus a longer scan time. So essentially, the more the separation between the slices significantly increases, the higher the signal to noise ratio, SNR, will be. This means that as the gap between the segments ultimately increases, the SNR improves, which in essence enhances the image quality and allows you to effectively cover a large area in a short time. It should also be reasonable and ensure that you don't lose data, meaning without compromising the integrity of the data in any way or form. The choice depends on the specific requirements of the type of organ you are working on or imaging technique. So increasing it will enhance the focus in the region of interest. We mentioned that there is something called a voxel. When you talk about this square, you refer to it as a voxel and its size will increase because you have enlarged the slice you are taking. So 
we call it voxel size. However, what will happen to your signal to noise ratio, SNR? It will become smoother, meaning its value will be higher. Therefore, an increase leads to an increase in the SNR. Now this is the part I was telling you about, which is called the number of excitations, NEX, or NSA. What does this mean? It means that you are taking your slices more than once. In this case, you are acquiring the signal multiple times and submitting them, which improves the quality of the signal. However, this comes at the cost of doubling the time, doubling the scan time. Increasing the number of signal averages or the number of excitations increases the scan time, which in turn increases the signal to noise ratio, SNR, because it enhances the signal. However, increasing the scan time may lead to motion artifacts since the patient may not remain still, causing blurring. The relationship between SNR and NEX is proportional. The more you double the NEX, the more the SNR increases by the square root of that amount. For example, if you double the NEX from 2. The square root of 2 is approximately 1.4 meaning you have improved the image quality by about 1.4 times, or roughly 1.5 times. Here you have the number of excitations set to 1, and here the number of excitations is set to 8. Based on the motion, which one do you think is better in image quality, the number of excitations set to 8 or the one set to 1? 8, right? So what happened to the scan time here? Here it is 2 minutes. How much is it here? Increasing the number of excitations, NX, will significantly improve your signal-to-noise ratio, SNR, as it increases with the number of averages or number of excitations. Next, this will make the image overall smoother, but it will come at the cost of scan time. So, there is one more thing. There is something called bandwidth. What is the subject of bandwidth? When patients are asleep under the MRI machine, there is a coil specialized for the argon being imaged. This coil transmits and receives signals, and there is a core. When you lie under the MRI machine, there is a coil that is specific to the organ you are imaging. This coil both transmits and receives signals within it. The RF pulse is sent for the specific slice you want to excite, and it receives the pulse correctly. The bandwidth represents the range of frequencies present in the slice you want to acquire. For example, I want to obtain a specific slice now. You are now the RF pulse that you send to the organ you want to image has a range of frequencies, meaning you don't just provide a single frequency, you provide a set of frequencies. This set of frequencies essentially includes the slice you want to take. The larger the thickness of the slice, which is the organ you want to image, the more frequencies are present within the slice itself. If you increase the thickness, you essentially increase the amount of frequencies present, so you need to provide an RF pulse that has a bandwidth. This bandwidth essentially increases and is referred to as the transmitter bandwidth with your thickness. The larger the thickness, the larger the bandwidth of the RF pulse you will send. So, how do I do this? 
You do this by essentially determining what your parameters are. Basically, you have your setup which is large and takes up a lot of space. So you need to say, well, this location here has how many points? Then you send it with everything that is present here. And consequently, the one that comes will be similar to what you sent. How will you know? It's very simple. I know how my setup works and I know the strength of it in this location. Therefore, I will be able to determine what tells me that it equals what I will know exactly how much it is at this point. As for the diamagnetic ratio, I will know exactly the frequency at this point. It decreases and diminishes depending on whether you are taking a large or small angle. Keep in mind that the larger you make it, the more it tilts at a greater angle. When you tilt it at a greater angle, you have increased the frequencies of the protons that are present. Okay, so when you tilt, as long as you are in this position, as long as you are on the surface, and as long as you have low stepping, the variation in frequencies between the protons is minimal. The more you increase it, you become more of a stepper. In this case, you are increasing the variation between the existing frequencies. This will depend on you, look doctor, and the MRI, as I said, is sequential. So if this part, please go back to the videos again. And if you still don't understand, just let me know. Okay, I just want to make sure you all understand that there is something called transmitter bandwidth of frequencies. Is that clear or not? Hi, doctor. I'm just asking, asking, asking. The transmitter bandwidth, did you understand the term bandwidth or not? Okay, slowly. I have an organ, everyone. I want to take a slice to explain to you in the last video that I want to see this slice at what frequency and put an RF pulse that is in resonance with this frequency. This slice is beautiful. When you increase the thickness, it will not include many protons. And these protons are exposed to the gradient magnetic field. All these protons will rotate at the same frequency or, or different ones. So I need to send one frequency or a range of frequencies that matches the frequency range of my slice. The range that you mentioned I would send is called bandwidth. Bandwidth increases as your device increases. I call this transmitter bandwidth. Is that clear? This is what I wanted to say. There is also something called receiver bandwidth. What is receiver bandwidth? The signals that will be received have a specific time for reception, meaning that the recording time of the signal is received at a certain moment, but the machine itself takes time to receive the signal. For example, if I am speaking very quickly, you might say to me, Dr. Islam, could you please slow down your frequency in speaking because I can hear you? but I am unable to understand you. So, if I am speaking very quickly, you will be able to distinguish my words. Well, if I speak slowly, then I have slowed down my frequency, right? Now, if my ear's ability to capture the information you are telling me is faster than your speaking speed, I will have a problem. If I am slow, then I will have a problem with the information you are sending me. It will get lost, right? The same goes for the coil that receives these frequencies, which is the receiver. I tell him I want you to receive quickly or receive slowly. Is that clear? Well, if he receives quickly, can he receive more information or less information? 
more information. So if I receive more information, I will receive more frequencies from the image, right? Just imagine if I received all these frequencies from the image, would that enhance the image quality or reduce it? Focus. If I receive more frequencies, it means I am receiving more information, which means I am getting data from many points. Yes, if there is a lot of noise, the resolution will decrease immediately. But look, Dr. Islam, when you receive a lot of information, it means you have a lot of data and many details. Since you have many details, you will have high resolution. All right, so if your receiver bandwidth is substantially large, essentially that means it is related to the sampling time, rate of speed at which you capture this vital information. The larger your receiver bandwidth is, in essence, the more detailed and comprehensive amount of information you can effectively capture within a short period of time, allowing you to receive many frequencies simultaneously. The bandwidth here relates directly to determining precisely how much range and variety among frequencies I will be able to receive. Now, since I have reduced significantly, shortened recording duration for capturing signal data accurately, I will indeed be capable receiving numerous different types frequencies. So question arises whether these multitude various represent an extensive broad spectrum range, narrow limited, is my overall available capacity regarding frequency reception considered relatively expansive, wide-ranging, rather restricted, confined? So when I say that your receiver bandwidth is large, I mean that I am telling my machine to reduce the sampling time. What does reducing the sampling time mean? It means to decrease the time you are recording in your signal, which means to receive more frequencies. It also means to reduce the resolution of the image and to decrease the signal-to-noise ratio. Understand. Beautiful, beautiful question. You have received a lot of data meaning the resolution has increased, right? The data you are receiving, the frequencies you are getting, where are they coming from, ma'am? They are coming from the image, from the object you are imaging, and from the background, right? And they are coming from the noise present in the image. This means that when you receive many frequencies, it means you are receiving a lot of signals from everywhere in your slices. So what does this mean? it means you are taking a large range of frequencies, high frequencies. And remember, noise is always something to consider until you see the videos represented with high frequencies. What does that mean? You will also understand it from the previous videos. You will find that noise is a high frequency, while the object I want to image is low frequency. So if I receive a large range of frequencies, will I receive noise or not? Will the noise increase or not? So the signal to noise ratio, SNR, will decrease, right? Now, the part you are in, how is it represented in two types? You will see in the last video, the previous videos will detail this project. So I have the receiver bandwidth set to a range of 30, and the SNR is 200, which is large. If I increase the receiver bandwidth, what happens to the SNR? Look, every time I increase the bandwidth, what happens is that the signal starts to decrease, 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 until the image becomes very grainy. So if increasing the receiver's bandwidth gives me a noisy image, then in the end, if it increases too much, that's it. This is also another example that illustrates here the bandwidth of 130 and here the bandwidth of 300. The bandwidth was increased, 
What happened to the resolution? The resolution increased and the image became noisier. The daytime story decreased. This is the bandwidth of 100 and this is the bandwidth of 500. There is an important point we can take from this point. When the bandwidth increases, it is good if you enhance it or overcome it. There is something called metal artifact and something called chemical shift artifact. The patient has metals in their body that are supposed to create artifacts with the magnetic field or not create artifacts due to the presence of existing artifacts. This artifact has a signal and a specific frequency. If you are receiving a large range of frequencies, you won't be able to distinguish between the frequency of the artifact and the normal frequency. Can you or can't you? Why slowly? What does it mean to receive many frequencies, doctor? It means you have the ability to listen. Look, doctor, slowly, I am standing here now. I am illustrating it to you in real life. You will understand. I am talking a lot, so you are unable to catch what I am saying. What will happen to you? Confusion. You won't understand all my words. They will mix with the artifacts that came from my mouth. And the normal speech, right? But I am speaking slowly, so there is an artifact coming to you. Will you be able to distinguish it or not?